Welcome to episode 4 in my How To series. You will have seen from the previous episode how I make the vulcanized rubber moulds I use for my production casting. These moulds are used to quickly and accurately cast large quantities of parts and are ideal for my range of aircraft and tanks. I also use these moulds to cast the tracks, running gear and other multiple parts for my personal projects such as Project Mouse. These are the moulds I made in episode 3 of my How To series. They were made for the Schmidt BF 109K4 by vulcanising the rubber discs around carefully prepared metal masters. There's a 12 inch mould for the fuselage and wing and a 9 inch mould for all the smaller parts. For casting there are a few things I need. Some talc to lubricate the moulds, a paintbrush, some metal cutters, some long nose pliers and some heavy gloves. Of course we also need some metal. This is the same metal we used to cast with the silicon moulds back in episode 2. It comes in like this as refined ingots of pewter. Each ingot is about a kilo and stamped with its grade on the back. This is my casting setup comprising a melting pot, casting machine and compressor. The heart of the operation is the centrifugal casting machine where the moulds are held and spun so the metal can be poured in. It's driven by an electric motor but requires air pressure to clamp the moulds together, hence the need for the compressor. There are a few things we can control on the casting machine to help get successful castings. The speed, direction of rotation and pressure holding the mould together are all things we can change. To the right of the casting machine is my melting pot. This is thermostatically controlled, allowing me to vary the metal temperature for specific types of castings. As you can see it's easily adjusted. I normally cast fuselages and wings at about 285 degrees C. The speed control is on a dial. About 350 RPM should be a good starting point for the 12 inch mould. The air pressure clamping the mould together can be varied but I normally leave this at about 15 psi. The moulds have an optimum operating temperature and to get there I preheat the 9 inch moulds in the oven at about 125 degrees C. At this temperature they should cast well, straight from the oven. My oven is too small for the 12 inch moulds so I have to use a more direct method to preheat the rubber. The molten pewter is poured directly into the cavities of the mould. This gets the heat exactly to where it's needed. Once the molten metal has solidified it can be removed and melted down again. The metal is still very hot so I always use pliers. Now to talc the mould. The talc acts as a lubricant, helping the metal to flow into the mould. This is dusted on, brushed into the mould and then knocked off by banging the moulds together. The registration marks cut into the edge of the mould makes alignment and assembly a simple process. The assembled mould now goes into the casting machine. The upper plate locks into place and an air ram pushes the base and the mould up to the preset pressure. Once the lid is closed the machine automatically starts spinning. Then all I have to do is pour the metal down the funnel. After about two or three minutes the metal has cooled to the point where the mould can be taken out. In a production situation Another prepared mould would take its place in the machine and spun while this one cools down. 
With the metal solid, the mould can be opened and the castings removed. The mould is then quickly retalked and prepared to go back into the casting machine before it drops below its optimum temperature. The fuselage and some of the parts weren't up to quality and so they go back into the pot and are melted back down together with some spare castings from the previous production batch. When I get castings that are acceptable, they can be removed from the runner by hand, as long as the metal has cooled down enough. Sometimes I need the cutters, sometimes the gloves. Now I need to cast the 9 inch parts mould. To do this, I need to reconfigure the casting machine. Bolts are screwed into the base plate to locate the 9 inch mould securely, and a smaller mat is used. The now very hot 9 inch mould is prepared in the same way as before, but this time brass rods are laid into the undercarriage in the mould for extra reinforcement. As before, the moulds are spun, but this time at a higher speed and a higher metal temperature to get the metal to flow into the detail. If you spin too fast or don't have enough pressure holding the mould together, molten metal can spray out of the mould, like this. It's an inconvenience, but not a disaster. Let's open the mould and see what we have. Everything is cast and you can see where the metal has escaped from the mould down the air vents. Now I use the cutters to remove the parts. Often they can be broken off by hand, but that means waiting for them to cool down, and I have better things to do. As before, the excess metal goes straight back into the pot. This does affect the temperature of the metal in the pot, so it has to be planned so you don't have to wait for the metal to come back up to temperature with the mould cooling down too much. Let's have a look at what we've just cast. These castings are fresh from the moulds with no clean up. There are lots of feeds and air vents to remove. Even some flash on the back edge of the wing. The most difficult part to cast, the fuselage, has come out pretty well. Everything will clean up fine, I'm very happy. Here's the full set of parts with all the feeds and vents removed. You can see how the pewter has cast around the brass rod in the undercarriage. This extra strength is essential for dispatch, especially for my overseas orders. Here's the fuselage against a reject casting. The roughness down the side of the reject is porosity, caused by the mould being too hot. The pocking near the front is trapped air, often caused by pouring too fast. Now I just have to break out the files. In the next how-to video, I'll be looking at something completely different, decal printing. I hope you found this episode of my how-to series interesting. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the next episode in this series and follow other projects I'm working on.
If you have any questions about issues raised in this series, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.